find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. The scene a short time ago, this crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with the Chicago Bears. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. Pressure and he's taken down. A bear sack. Leonard Floyd. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. And so much for that great field position to start the game. Now they're way behind the sticks. Can't wait to see what their second down call is going to look like now. Yeah, they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Danny Trevathan there to bring him down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And a pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Leonard Floyd in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Here's Ryan Quigley now. As his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Taken from just outside the 30. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Bears take over. Chicago coming back out here on offense. And when Mitchell Trubisky, two more touchdown passes last week in the win over the Jets. 13 now in his last four games. And they're now four and three. And the headliner, though, for me was, oh, that's great. But did you see what he was wearing, Trubisky, walking into the game? I certainly did. The Mike Ditka sweater vest, vintage Bears look, had the shades going as well. Didn't notice if he was chomping the gum or not like Coach Ditka did so well, but he played well in the game. He's been playing well, needs to continue with consistency because the Bears, think about this now. A two-game losing streak was snapped, and during that two-game losing streak and now this win in the NFC North, they went from first place to last place back to first in the past three weeks. Not they, too bad. But keep in mind, both Khalil Mack and Allen Robinson were also out due to injury in that victory. So the Bears fighting through despite those guys being gone. Hits his target. It's Taylor Gabriel. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Trubisky to Gabriel there for a Bears first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. On first and ten, it's Trubisky. And some room to maneuver. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football. But how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. His throw caught at about the five. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Throwing here, Trubisky. 
and his throw is going to be incomplete. Deion Sims is tied in the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Here's Trubisky. That's caught at the one. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Adam Shaheen, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears have taken the early lead. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. Parkey adds the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. As Minnesota comes back out here, Charles, I'm just kind of looking down at the NFC North and the standings. Gosh, this is still anybody's division. I mean, the Vikings at 4-3-1, they have as good a chance as anybody to win this thing. They certainly do, and we've seen how Chicago in three weeks went from first to last and back to first. So movement is a big part of the NFC North right now. For Minnesota, one more home game versus Detroit coming up this week. Then they hit their open week. Then they go to Chicago, home for Green Bay. Three straight division games that could go a long way towards shaping that race. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Now a first carry for their fullback. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Credit the tackle there to Aaron Lynch. And that was a good collision right there. And I know this as a former defender. If you're playing linebacker, you're going through a checklist on every play on who you think's going to get the ball and where you think the ball's going to go. Rarely do you expect the fullback position to get it. And on that play, he did. So you've got to steal yourself at that point because the contact is going to be strong. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Taking it about the 16. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. And look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Now Trubisky on first down. That is incomplete. Trey Burton, the one he was looking for. And now it's second down. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass would go from incomplete to complete. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. This is Howard on second down. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. The tackle made there by Harrison Smith. 
Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. On third down, Trubisky. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Everson Griffin with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. I remember when I was a kid, and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain, and guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? <laughs> no, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. How much were they, a dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Good open field tackling there, a 50-yard punt, followed by just a one-yard return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and ten. And it's a welcome back to hell for last year's number one pick. This is Dalvin Cook. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. A quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. They go play action. Cousins. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs, 69 yards. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Onto the field now come the Bears. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The tackle made there by Linval Joseph. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. On second down, here's Trubisky. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of two, now third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. He'll leave it for Cohen, complete. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up four. Usually the offense has an answer to a safety valve. And that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Sherrill's to return it. 
Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now out comes Minnesota. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. The hut, There's a hot hut. On first and 10, Cousins. And Rudolph has it left side. A good pick up there, a 22. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. First down, here's Cousins. He'll find Thielen working the middle, and he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Thielen last week, he set the record. Eight straight 100-yard games to begin the season. He didn't do it by much, but he did it. Seven catches, 103 yards, and a score against the Saints on Sunday night. What an impressive performance. What an impressive career already for Adam Thielen, who started as an undrafted free agent, had to go to a free agent rookie tryout camp of Minnesota practice squad, special teams, and now one of the premier receivers in the league. Tied with Calvin Johnson for the all-time record for any weeks. Johnson had eight straight in 2012. Remember, Johnson went to Georgia Tech. Adam Thielen, Minnesota State, located in Mankato, Minnesota. Cousins now already over 100 yards passing in this first quarter. It's first and 10. Cousins again. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 16 yards to the 16 and a first down. First red zone chance now for the Vikings. They come up first and 10 at the 16. A give. This is Cook. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Now a second down throw for Cousins. This is caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Cousins to his tight end, Rudolph, for a Viking first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They'll run for it with Cook. And he is not going to get through here on try number one. They stop him at the goal line. No gain on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. They'll give it to him up the middle. And I think they stopped him again. They did at the one-yard line. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. This Bears defense trying to hold on. This is third and goal. Cousins to throw it. And that is incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. And Forbath will put this one through. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. 
So it's an old school extra point that counts three times. So it's certainly a disappointment they weren't able to get it in the end zone. Yeah, I can just imagine post game head coach looking at the box score 19 yard field goal grimacing a little bit but having to realize that at that moment getting three points was vital go ahead and get the points put them on the board four bat now to kick it away after the made field goal now the return man this is benny cunningham and he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Dumps that off to his running back, Jordan Howard. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll make it a second down. But it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff. But still, a lot of guys to account for. Now Trubisky to throw on second. Able to find Shaheen here. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Hey, down, down. Hey, Trubisky with a give to Howard. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now Trubisky. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They run play action for Howard. Now Trubisky going to let one foot, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the former first-rounder, Trey Waynes. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Throwing his Cousins. And complete right side, the tight end Rudolph. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Vikings on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and seven. 
From the gun, here's Cousins. Open man is stealing his complete. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. A first down from Minnesota. Cousins finding Thielen. Hey, we talked about Adam Thielen a little bit last year, didn't we? Possession receiver, makes some tough catches, gets it done, and he's a homeboy. <laughs> Grew up very close to the Twin Cities. And showing those possession receiver skills right there to pick up the first. They go play action here on first down. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Aaron Lynch coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Yeah, they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 17. Play action now, Cousins. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down, threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. Here's Ryan Quigley now, standing just outside his own goal line. It's taken to the 26. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Let's see if you allow me to switch topics here for a second. By, by all means. Thank you. Ahead. Thank you. The, the Saints have won six in a row, and they've been a team that we've talked about a lot in recent weeks. This coming week, though they play the undefeated Rams that is going to be a blockbuster matchup man they get them at home they get them in the dome so that's going to be a whole lot of fun to watch they are a true contender to the Rams right now okay let's face it the Rams are undefeated taking on everyone high-flying offense defense with a guy named Aaron Donald that can wreck you from inside but the Saints are contenders because their run defense is pretty darn stout Cam Jordan their defensive end never gets enough attention or recognition and now they're unleashing the rookie Marcus Davenport off the edge at quarterbacks. He's playing better and better every week. I think this is going to be a whole lot of fun. Drew Brees taking on the young quarterback Jared Goff. I think we've got a blast on our hands. And how about the running back battle? Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram from New Orleans, Todd Gurley for the Rams. Buckle up. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes these quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some dutch. Yeah, especially maybe want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. And now out comes Minnesota. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. The left side caught by Diggs. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. 
tough to defend because you think it's a go route and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Now Cousins. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. Cousins. His throw incomplete. Latavius Murray, the intended receiver out of the backfield. And it's second down. But just taking a glance real quick at next week's games in the NFL. You know, Chiefs at Browns, that's kind of intriguing. Obviously, the Browns are struggling, Charles, but Mayfield and Mahomes, that's going to be a fun quarterback battle. It's going to be a blast, isn't it? Maybe they can recreate their day when they played against each other in college when Mayfield had transferred from Texas Tech to Oklahoma. Mahomes is now the starting quarterback at Texas Tech. Mayfield throws for 545 and seven touchdowns. And the better game was had by Mahomes. Now, Mahomes' team lost. But individually, 734 yards, five touchdowns, and ran for 85 yards more. It's unbelievable. I thought both of their arms would fall off at the end of that game. Those are some big 12 stats right there. Now, you've got the stat sheet from that game in front of you. How many times did Mahomes throw it? He threw it 88 times. That's unbelievable. 88. I think that game ended probably two days later after kickoff. I mean, it's unreal how long it took. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There was nothing available there for him. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Trubisky will throw. Robinson's got it. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Trubisky on first down. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's Trubisky to throw, and that's complete. It sends. First time that they called his number tonight, and it gets him a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, 
tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. On first down, they run with Howard. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The tackle goes there to Linval Joseph. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. On second down, Trubisky. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and that's going to lead to a third down. Throwing the out route and complete. It's Cohen. A gain of 13 and also the first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first and 10, it's Trubisky. It's brought in by Kevin White. And he gets it down to the 32. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Throwing once more, it's Trubisky. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Again, it's Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Terrence Newman with a pick. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. That was an interception, but on the field, the guys are picking it off. They're not saying that. What word are they using? It's Oski. And that means catch the ball and go the other way. That's your vernacular. I've never heard anybody say Oski. Ask around. They'll tell you. Forbath able to convert the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Cunningham now to return. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. So now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure 
if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Yeah, quick throw here, that's complete. Even with the nice move, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. From the shotgun is Trubisky. They'll leave it for Cohen, complete. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. The Bears on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. A give to Howard, and not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. And another timeout called by the Vikings now as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They start the drive with Cook. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Cunningham now to return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now Trubisky to throw. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Daniil Hunter in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. 
and I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed. And, and for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Xavier Rhodes with a pick. But with that incompletion, I want to take a look ahead to Sunday night, Charles. Packers, Patriots, only going to be the second all-time meeting between Brady and Rodgers. Yeah, they met in Lambeau in 2014. Aaron Rodgers' Packers team won the game, I believe, was it 26-21. And head-to-head, -head, Tom Brady had a nice night, 245 yards and two touchdowns. But Aaron Rodgers, 368 and two touchdowns. I can't wait to see them go back and forth in this one. I hope it turns into that type of a shootout game where, you know, one team scores, here comes the other, and both of them have big, big games. You, do you think it's eating at Brady? I know. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Aaron Lynch in there to get him for his second sack of the night. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Ryan Quigley now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Let's take it at around the 40. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. Let's see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. They run with Howard. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They run play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. He's going to float this over the middle deep. And oh, it'll be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Well, Charles, hard to believe. We're already at the halfway point of the season, less than 100 days now until Super Bowl 53. And right now, Chiefs-Rams, they appear to be so good. But give me one other contender in each conference that could press them. Well, let's start in the AFC. If you're going to give me a strong contender or have me pick a strong contender, you never take New England out of it. And don't forget, New England has the victory over Kansas City, albeit at home in New England. But still, Tom Brady and the Patriots, never count them out. If you want to pick a dark horse team out of the AFC, how about the Los Angeles Chargers? Hmm. Philip Rivers and crew throwing it around. They'll get Joey Bosa back a little bit later in the season to help provide better pass rush. If that happens, they can compete with anyone. If I flip it over to the NFC side, New Orleans right now. It's now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. And I think the Bears have recovered. They have. And a defensive-minded coach loves to turn up the heat, turns it up there, it pays off. And back in the good old days, those defensive-minded coaches just talked about intimidating teams, using force, right, beating them to the punch. In this case, they're talking about creating turnovers. That's all they preach, all game long, all practice long, every meeting. Get the football. That's what they want. 
I don't think any of us were surprised that they decided to start this drive on the ground after the last two drives ended in interceptions. Unfortunately, though, not a lot going on on that first play. Yeah, I think the anticipation was felt also by the defense. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Make it now three tackles for a loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing, but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now, making some big-time plays, getting into the offense's backfield and spilling everything. Dumps that off to his running back, Jordan Howard. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. That goes in the category of a play that the defense is going to cherish and excites them. A completion, yes, you give up the pass, but no gain. I mean, that's exactly what you want on defense. And sets up the fourth down. And Parkey's kick is good. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. So not sure how they feel about that. They had golden field position to start the drive after the fumble recovery, but they went backward and then got three. Well, let's go from gold to silver, because the silver lining is they got the three, right? You were talking about the golden field position. They didn't take advantage of it. That has to feel like a letdown. You always stand ready to pounce. <laughs> always. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. Here comes Sherrills. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Throwing Cousins. And Rudolph has it left side. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. He's got it complete to Diggs, right side. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. First down, here's the run with Cook. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Second down, Cousins. Breaks through the contact. It's complete to Diggs. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. The offense on third down tonight, it's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. They're not 
going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. Well, there's two sides here. I guess you could pinpoint and look at the offense and say, oh, man, what a disaster. Hey, the defense, though, they came through. Preparation's the key to everything, and when you're on the defensive side of the ball and in special teams meetings, you prepare for plays like this, and in this case, they were actually able to win it. And we've got movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that will help him at contract time. You, he's got the lane, and there he goes. Touchdown, Chicago! Taylor Gabriel, 69 yards. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the football game. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kicks away here. This is fielded at the goal line. Pushing through the contact. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and ten. They go play action here on first down. Pressure and he's taken down. A bear sack. Aaron Lynch in there again. My goodness, that is now his fourth sack tonight. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. A good pick up there, 18 yards as they get closer for third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Here's Ryan Quigley now. He's been terrific so far. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, See if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. They go with Howard to begin the drive. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Go, 
Again, it's Howard. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Tackle made that time by Anthony Barr. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Bears on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try to run for it with Howard, and he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. And we return welcoming you back to All Minneapolis. Right. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On first down, Trubisky over the middle, and it's incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Second and ten from the 33-yard line. Trubisky, draw play, gives to Howard. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. Now a play fake here on first down. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. He's going to sling this deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a solid run down inside the 30. Pretty good running there, nine yards. Sets up a third and one. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. The Bears on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. They need just a yard here, it's third and one. On the handoff, this is Howard. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Caught out left side by Robinson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him nine there on the first down completion.
That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Out of the gun, Trubisky looking middle and it's incomplete. But they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Bears on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. They're up against a third and one situation. Trubisky will throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter tie. And Parkey's kick is good. And with that, they take the lead here, 20 to 17. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. Here comes Sherrills. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Cousins on first down. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put him on the backside of the formation and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Cousins now. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Cousins now a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. On play action, Cousins. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Eddie Goldman in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. From the gun, here's Cousins. He'll find Thielen working the middle. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Third and long for Cousins. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the 
sack. Aaron Lynch in there again. My goodness, that is now his fourth sack tonight. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? The Bears' offense now heading back out onto the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side. Maybe a little gas, yeah, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield on giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Everson Griffin in there to drop it for his second sack now here tonight. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Running with Howard, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Sherrill's. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Vikings, they'll be set up well as they take over in great field position. First and 10. fake cousins pressure and he's going to be taken down they sack him back right around the 44 leonard floyd in there to get him for his second sack of the night man he got in there so quickly charles what could the offense have done to adjust and account for that but what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you and you change the blocking schemes maybe you go to max protection the biggest ones maybe bring your running back in to try and keep you clean but in that case that didn't happen zero accountability and a sack resulted a second down pass play there but it's incomplete so they look like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression just trying to find his outlet man that time ends up leading him just a bit too much possibly a turning point big play coming this is third and long to throw cousins and the pressure too much that time as cousins goes down Leonard Floyd bringing the pressure again, and that is his third sack here tonight. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. And that's exactly what happened on that play. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Now Howard. And he'll get him a little space here up to the five-yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six.
They go with Howard again. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Here's Trubisky. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. And another timeout called by the Vikings now. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. some space up to about the 25. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time, the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. And that'll set them back five. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Pulled in at the 24. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and ten. He's back to throw. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. And they're able to stop it here on the spike with three seconds remaining. And it's incomplete, but there is still two seconds left in this ball game. So they'll have one final shot.
One last shot now for Cousins. He's going to let it fly. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. And this ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Minneapolis, good night, everybody.